Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, July 15th, 2021. It is 8.11 a.m. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you got your coffee going. If you haven't already had it, get with it. Um, we're going to start off today going over some Bitcoin stuff and a couple other things. Um, this will be just kind of a general overview of some of the things I'm keeping an eye on. It's not going to be too specific, but... Uh, first look, Spike Lee's TV ad for crypto touts it as new money for a diverse world. CoinCloud chose Spike Lee to direct the crypto commercial specifically for his experience at exploring social issues, and the firm noted they want to spark important dialogue with the ad campaign. Um, old money is as rich as it looks is flat out broke. Let's watch this. Our currency is not current. Old money is as rich as it looks, is flat out broke. Don't believe me? I got the receipts. We call it green, but it's only white. Where's the women? The black folks and the people of color. Native Americans got a nickel. A nickel! People don't even stop to pick up a nickel off the side. Seven million Americans have no bank account. 20 million are underbanked. Old money is not gonna pick us up. It pushes us down exploits systematic oppressions but new money new money is positive inclusive fluid strong culturally rich where status is anything but status quo do your own research. The digital rebellion is here. Old money is out. New money is in. That's a pretty cool ad. Um, those ATM things look pretty cool. I can't wait to start seeing some stuff like that here down in Southwest Florida where I am. We, we do have some uh, Bitcoin ATMs scattered around, but not really everywhere. Uh, China's Bitcoin mining share was in decline even before the crackdown. China's share of mining slid to 46% in April of 21 from 75% in September of 2019. This is according to a study done by the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance. The methodology is based on China's share of the power of computers connected to the Bitcoin hash rate. Uh, data after April is not available, so it's unclear how the crackdown has affected those figures. Chinese state began taking harsher steps against the mining industry in May, shutting down operations in several regions, rich in the coal and hydropower that the miners have been using. The main beneficiaries of the decline appear to be the U.S. and Kazakhstan. The U.S.'s share has more than quadrupled since September 2019, sitting at 16.8 as of April. Kazakhstan is now the third largest producer of Bitcoin with a share of 8.2. There have been no signs in recent weeks that Central Asia country is the preferred destination for mining firms migrating from China with Bit Mining and Canaan both establishing operations in the past month. Um, going into that, Greenridge buys 8,300 Bitcoin mining rigs from new partner Foundry. The agreement will add 800 pay to hash to the Foundry USA mining spool computing power. The companies have said in a joint statement. Um... Where'd it go? They're also financing Greenridge's purchase of 6,000 ant miners, 5,000 which are already in operation, um, the 2,300 watts miners. Um, Foundry and Coindesk are both subsidiaries of Digital Currency Group. Interesting. We just talked about them in a video yesterday. Um, where does it say? Greenridge is trying to clean up the environmental impact using low carbon sources of energy and carbon offsets. It owns a natural gas plant in New York that powers its nearby mining facility. Uh, they do plan to expand in South Carolina and go public through a firmer with an IT firm. 
and they were founded in 2020 by Digital Currency Group with a $100 million investment. China's crackdown on crypto mining is providing a tailwind for the company, and that's what I'm saying. Everybody's freaking out about Bitcoin. When these miners all get established, if the regulation hasn't taken it out yet, I mean, here's another one. Bit Digital is migrating almost 15,000 Bitcoin miners to the U.S. amid the Chinese crackdown. Um, I mean, this is crazy. That's a lot. I don't know what that computes to as far as like how much of the network they're spitting out or how any of that stuff works. But I mean, that is, I know that's a lot. Yeah. They got a lot of machines too. You can see right here where it says... Uh, they have a fleet of almost 45,000 total miners. So they're still in the, I guess they're getting everything out. Um, nodes on Bitcoin's Lightning Network have doubled in three months. I thought this was a cool article. You know, I'm not pro Bitcoin, but I'm not anti Bitcoin either. I do not hold any. I probably never will again. I did at one point. I'm not going to get into that. But you see the Lightning Network. Bitcoin capacity just from January. I mean, these are, it's just stepping on up. Um, where did it say here? I saw, um, yeah, although still in its early days, the network often reports promising interactions. In April, it reached a milestone of 10,000 nodes and had just over 45,000 payment channels holding almost 1,200 Bitcoin. Since then, the network capacity has ballooned to 1,800 locked-in channels, adding 20% increase this month alone. For the number of nodes, more than doubled 20 to 22, almost 23,000. It took nearly a year for the number of nodes to double last time from 5,000 to 10,000. Now we're seeing it in a couple months. So pretty cool thing there. The growth is still happening. Don't, don't be misled by all this FUD. Uh, Ark, Investor, Ark Invest CEO to CNBC says Bitcoin is becoming healthier as miners relocate around the world and begin using more renewable energy. I do agree with that. I don't think this thing's over yet, but I do agree with that. Las Vegas Strip Club now accepts Bitcoin payments over the Lightning Work. The club is only accepting Bitcoin payments for bottle services, but has plans to expand the transactions to food, admissions, among others. I'm not going to get into the whole strip club thing, but if you can tip in crypto... Oh, imagine the names of some of those meme coins. Anyway, NFL Saquon Barkley converting his endorsements to Bitcoin to create generational wealth. I sent him a tweet earlier letting him know about XRP, XLM, XDC, and even Casino Coin and several other assets that saying, you know, Saquon's a smart guy. You know, he should, uh, he should do some research. We're seeing inflation and we're learning you can't save wealth. That's why I'm going to be taking my marketing money in Bitcoin. When you see the KDs and LeBrons and the Bradys of the world, you want to create generational wealth. You can't do that with the sport that I play and the position that I play coming off of injuries. When you sit out of football for a whole year, you realize that this game could be taken away from you. He's a smart young man, hell of a player. Hope you do get it this year, just not against Washington. Uh, U U.S. SEC pushes Wisdom Tree Bitcoin ETF decision to fall. And this right here, what I think is going on, I don't think anybody's getting an ETF until one of the big boys does it. You're going to see like Goldman, J.P. Morgan, State Street, you know, one of the Black Rocks, one of these big companies is going to come out. They're going to apply for it and they're going to get it like immediately. And then they're going to let everybody else jump in. That, that's what I think is going to happen. That is pure speculation, but that... It's how things tend to go. Breaking. BlackRock's $9.5 trillion fund invests in MicroStrategy to gain exposure to Bitcoin. Um, meanwhile, that, this is a great one right here. I got to hit that up. Meanwhile, just yesterday I talked about it. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said that there's very little demand for crypto. So, you know, pay attention to what they do, not what they say. Buy the rumor, sell the news. And Bitcoin will not and should not be a currency in the U.S., says Michael Saylor. One of the biggest Bitcoin maxis out there. He is the owner of and founder of MicroStrategy, who just got this investment from uh, BlackRock. Uh, he says, I don't really think that Bitcoin is going to be a currency in the U.S. ever, nor do I think it should be. I really think logically it should be treated as property. It's like owning a building or owning a bar of gold or a share of stock. It's property. Is that like a security? Anyway. Um, 
what it's doing is demonetizing other forms of property. If you have a million dollars and you have to choose whether to buy collectibles or a house or a second house or an ETF or a share of Apple stock or start a business, buy art, buy a bar of gold or buy Bitcoin, that's the fungible decision you have to make. If you buy and hold, that's good in any point in history of technology. If you have sold, you made a mistake, right? With the one caveat, you have to buy the winner. You have to buy the category killer. You have to buy Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. So the question is, how long do you got to watch them win before you decide they're winners? I think 30 years is a bit late. If you have to wait 30 years before you pick the winner, you probably won't get outsized returns. But you could have watched them win for 10 years and bought them and still made a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. The Coming into Bitcoin, Democrats are now calling for a tax on imports from polluting countries. The party's $3.5 trillion budget plan would include a carbon tariff as well as a host of other climate actions. And while I'm not going to go through this article, one thing you have to understand is that they start putting a carbon tariff on a lot of this stuff. And I don't think it, if they do a carbon tariff, it's not just going to hit imports from other countries. Carbon tariffs are going to become the uh, the norm if people aren't. Well, maybe it'll be a carbon tax, I guess, at that point. But I think that is what's coming. I think that's going to really affect Bitcoin in a big way. It's going to force them to innovate, which is great. But, you know, hopefully they, uh, whoever's in charge of that thing over there running the network, hopefully they can make this all happen for themselves. Another Bitcoin investor sues T-Mobile over SIM swap attack. It is not the first time they have faced litigation over such breaches uh, and its duty over customer care data. Um I, for one, refuse to use T-Mobile. I'm a Verizon guy. I have been for years. But I keep telling you guys, don't use SMS 2FA for um, two-factor authentication. Get Just get the, uh, what do you call it, the Google Authenticator app and, you know, run. You can even get that on a phone that's, you know, not connected to mobile and, you know, only use it on Wi-Fi when you need to type stuff. But that's up to you but I, I just I would get rid of SMS 2FA if I were you guys because that's how they're doing this all it takes is one bad actor at the kiosk at the mall to understand this and do a couple quick swaps and boom they, they can get all your text messages and you won't even know so um, Brad Kimes over at Digital Perspectives posted to Flare Networks that he would love to see Bitcoin become an F asset and it would certainly help get it from proof of work to staking as well like Chris Larson most recent call to action um, Flair responded and said it can be added via governance. If it was added transacting FBTC on Flair or issued trustlessly from Flair to the XRP ledger, could be a useful and trustless alternative to the Lightning Network. We, a lot of us in the community have been saying for a while, if they add Bitcoin to this thing, it's game on. I often wonder why they have not. I think it's very interesting that they have not. It's the biggest crypto in existence. So, you know, it's really interesting to see a platform coming out that does not have bitcoin um getting away from that we have some cbdc news uh the european central bank released this and it says we have decided to launch a project to prepare for possibly issuing a digital euro we will look at how a digital euro could be designed and distributed to everyone in the euro area as well as the impact it would have our experimental work has already allowed us to identify possible ways to protect privacy it has also shown that the energy needs of the infrastructure would be negligible compared with the energy consumption environmental footprint of crypto assets such as bitcoin a digital euro will be a successful if it adds value for the people merchants and financial intermediaries in intermediaries into the euro area says executive board member fabio panetta explaining the latest decision in the ecb blog I will put this in the description as well so you guys can get some of that information. Um, and then it just says here, you know, the Euro CBDC looks to leave energy intensive Bitcoin in its digital dust. So, you know, they're already saying it will not be something that uses a lot of power like that. They do not care. And this is a narrative that's been going on. It's been everything's been kind of quiet as far as the energy thing goes for like the last week or two. But you're going to see that ramp back up, in my opinion. Um, this is when uh, you had uh, the Federal Reserve Vice Chair Randall Quarles said when our concerns have been addressed, we should be saying yes to these products rather than straining to find ways to say no. And that is reference to the whole stablecoin CBDC argument going on. You know, a lot of these old money guys don't want crypto coming in. Well, this guy says that there's no reason to fear it. We just got to address some of these issues that we're concerned about. China cheers Russia's move away from the U.S. dollar in favor of the yuan. I bet they do. Russia's sovereign wealth fund cuts U.S. dollar reserves to zero. Directs that has a direct investment in China. Um, yeah, 
think that's interesting stuff going on over there. We'll see what happens with that. Right here, Anderzell had put a had said to um, Hester Purse. I'm glad to see you're trying to make a change and respond to people's questions. The future of your country depends on people like you. I know how dramatic it sounds. Spot on, though. Um, you know, and she had put on here, we still need crypto clarity. And this guy says, well, isn't that supposed to be your job? And she says, good point. I'll get right on that. Oh, wait, I'm only one of five commissioners, but I am working on it. She's been working on it. Um you know, I went and commented something on here. I don't know if it shows up. I'm like, hey, she's one of two commissioners who even remotely appear to be doing their jobs. We know where you stand, Hester. I do. One of my favorite people in government. And then here is the token safe harbor proposal 2.0 that was updated a few days ago. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it does say, as a new chairman has come to the SEC with a new agenda, it's the perfect time to consider afresh how our rules can be modified to accommodate new technology in a responsible manner. We invite public feedback um on the updated proposal and look forward to continued an honest open debate on how to address these issues and it really goes into this stuff the original one to summarize it in extreme paraphrase um i believe it was basically saying that once you started one of these like fintech type companies or whatever crypto type company it would be you would have a limit of time for you to become decentralized enough to not be a security um and to meet certain criteria that would be laid out by these uh organizations such as the FC, SCC, FSOC, CFTC, whoever it is that's dealing with that stuff at the time when that gets finally figured out, um, which I think is cool, man. I think I, you know, I don't think you get 20 years to figure it out as a company and just make a bunch of money. Like, okay, if this is what you're doing and you have to adhere to these guidelines, you have three years to figure it out. I think, I think it's pretty fair. Um, we all know that you can swap ownerships with these companies all over the place anyway, so you'll still have the same people in and out of the space like you do in every other market. Um, great post here. Tesla, Apple, and Amazon were all sued by the SEC. How they do it? Um, and then this is another one. Did I do? No, okay, I got this right. Sorry. Uh, JC Collins updated an article that he had posted back in 2018, and it goes over the geopolitics of XRP. Um, the lawsuit which the SEC launched against Ripple in December of 2020 is a clear example of the sort of games that are played at the international geopolitical level when it comes to money and the reserve status of the USD and the global monetary system. The below material will provide a deeper understanding of how these things work and what Ripple is fighting against. And this is going to touch on stuff with the North Korean peace summit. It gets into, you know, ODL and how they're trying to use that. I mean, you keep going down through here. It gets into South Korea. You go to North Korea. You're in Tokyo, London, New York. It goes to the original Bretton Woods convention or conference and talks about some stuff that went on there. And, you know, some really interesting stuff. This is stuff I don't see covered very much. Um, I skimmed through this earlier, but I'm going to actually go back and read this this morning once I get done with this video in, in its entirety. It's, it's a great read, though. It really is. It touches a, it's just a whole different angle that I'm used to seeing all the time. Hopefully it will be for you guys, too. Uh, this is back in 2018 sometime. David Schwartz had written something. He goes, I developed a lot of that technology and would never claim it's superior to Ethereum. Yes, the XRP ledger can confirm a transaction much faster than Ethereum can, and it can perform a much higher number of transactions per second than Ethereum. By those measures, it is superior. But remember, Ethereum is aimed at a completely different use case. You can't use transaction on Ripple's ledgers to execute smart contracts on a securely shared state. This is the main use case Ethereum is targeting, and the XRP ledger just can't do it at all. XRP is heavily optimized for several use cases. These include settlement of cross-currency payments, secure storage, robust credential management, off-ledger scaling, and so on. That necessitated a different set of trade-offs than Ethereum made. XRP technology is far superior to Ethereum if you care about settling international payments. Ethereum smart contract technology is far superior to XRP technology if you want on-ledger computing and smart contracts. And that's a great breakdown by David Schwartz, as always. But remember... Codius, guys. Codius, smart contracts done right. Now, this is an old article from 2018, but Codius is alive and well, as Stephen Thomas tweeted out not all that long ago. Um, so, this, I'm not going to go over this because this has already gotten long, but it talks about Codius being compared to Ethereum. And it says Ethereum builds its smart contract capabilities into its native blockchain code where Ripple opted to create Cody as separate and apart from the XRP ledger. Um, 
Previously, most distributed applications in the cryptocurrency community were written in such a way that clients interacted directly with the ledgers and the blockchains, which is the databases. However, oftentimes applications need to interact with multiple clients, multiple ledgers, and other internet services. An application logic layer is the ideal place to host such functionality. Um, and Codius works okay. Codius works differently than smart contracts in Bitcoin or Ethereum. The contracts run on an independent host without an underlying blockchain, similar to traditional hosting. This allows them to interact with any service or API, scale infinitely, and read from or write to any blockchain. The key challenge of smart contracts interoperability is solved. Um, Another biggest difference, perhaps one of the most important, is that Codius can keep secrets while Ethereum cannot. That means Codius can, for example, control a Bitcoin wallet while on Ethereum smart contract, while an Ethereum smart contract cannot. So basically, it's it can it can basically interact with all these different things at the same time while keeping all the information intact, safe, and secure. That's a super layman's description or explanation but uh valkyrie investments has launched an algorand trust thought that's pretty cool uh valkyrie is becoming a major institutional player you know it received 10 million from a series a funding round um people or oh wait the company received funding from various industries including finance sport and media popular crypto enthusiasts that invested included tron founder justin sun and litecoin founder charlie lee it's pretty cool algorand's on the move guys it's, it's been chosen believe that uh, Ledgermatic Treasury and Custody Solution now live for the Algorand network. The Algorand ecosystem is a vibrant community of really impressive and focused people. We recognize the growth in these projects and want an Algorand to feature amongst our first set of protocols we work with. With Ledger Automatic, we enable Algorand activity to drive overall financial growth and convert back offices into dynamic, secure, and hyper-connected functions. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of smart contract stuff as well. Um, you know, they're ISO 2022 compliant. They're listed right on the thing. We just went over that the other day. Algorand, and don't forget, the founder of Algorand comes from MIT. He's one of the smartest cryptography people on the planet. Won the Touring Award, which is basically the Nobel Peace Prize in that field. Uh, Charles Hoskinson has introduced a new novel algorithmic stablecoin. Now, this is interesting because nobody has nailed one of these yet. Um... Now, what will be really awesome, I actually just saw this tweet this morning and was wondering what he was talking about when I saw these, and I didn't realize it was from this article. So, what does it say? The authors of the paper stress that this concept is novel as the stability claims of their protocol are precisely and mathematically stated and proven. Besides that, the claims and their proofs are verified by two different techniques, namely bounded model checking and interactive theorem proving. While Hoskins' Twitter followers asked about the value of the new invention, he assured them that the product is ready. Algo stablecoin done. So, it's this is pretty cool stuff. They're ready to unveil groundbreaking stablecoin design for the entire DeFi segment. And keep in mind, guys, an algorithmic stablecoin. What's so big about that is it doesn't have to be. You can. It'll still be pegged, I, I believe. But the thing is, is that. When the value is all over the place and it's doing everything, the algorithmic stablecoin is able to adjust its value to keep it basically neutral in markets when they're having issues. Like if you got a lot of volatility, this is the algorithmic stablecoin. Is I don't know if it changes in value exactly or how it works, but it's supposed to maintain like a a stability based on the algorithm. Um, Cardano reaches another crucial milestone that brings it closer to smart contracts. They just have uh, entered the Alonzo White stage of the contract rollout, which is a hard fork. It's been successful. The new network is happily making blocks already, so it's cranking. They're rolling it out. White House plans a ransomware task force report, in my opinion. I'm not going to read this, but that means you might be seeing more of that. It, it's surprise. They are halting ransom payments made through cryptocurrency platforms. So they are finding ways to stop payments that are being issued on the blockchain, guys. Uh, Chinese crypto news. The app coin world is closing. They are shutting down its operations effective immediately, which is a this is a Chinese crypto news portal. Pretty crazy. They have already been investigated by Beijing authorities in 2019 for illegal token issuance. Local media reported at one time they outlawed additional coin offerings in 2017 and has already been delisted from Chinese app stores. It's pretty crazy. They're getting wild over there. Italian regulators join the club and say Binance is unauthorized. Um, 
Yeah, this whole thing's crazy, too. Not a lot of information in that article other than that. Uh, Revolut, valued at $33 billion and $800 million fundraising led by SoftBank. The figure is six times the company's valuation as of February 2020. Revolut is a UK-based digital bank. has been valued at $33 billion in a funding round led by SoftBank and Tiber Global Management. Um, so, yeah, they're raising this money to jump into the fintech space more. Uh, they have offered crypto trading since 2019 or 2017, and in May enabled customers to transfer assets both to wallets held else or bought to wallets held elsewhere. Excuse me. They intend to use the funds to boost offerings in the U.S. for customers and to expand into other international markets such as India. So yeah, it looks like uh, you know you got some money coming into the space again. I mean, you have so many of these companies bringing in you know billions and billions of dollars. It's it, you know, it's not going to take long once this thing rips, man. I'm telling you. That's not financial advice. But when that, when this slingshot is let loose, whew. Uh, NFT game creator flips Axie Infinity Virtual Land for 9,200% gain in one year. After he bought it for 300 and sold it for 28000 a year later. Um, I want to have land in all the different games that I think are going to grow in the next few years. They, if they mint 10,000 land plots, then all of a sudden there's a million players. You can see the scarcity there is going to cre really create some allure. And I agree with that, man. Decentraland, I, I'm going to go in there one day and do a video and just let you guys see how that is. But look into it yourself, Decentraland. Uh, the token is mana. If that, that might help you find it. But you can buy and sell land in there. And I've seen land in there sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's really crazy. And then what's this mean for the DeFi's blue chips? While the larger crypto market sentiment seems to have taken a fall, DeFi adoption is keeping the flag up with exponential growth patterns. DeFi ecosystem is showing no signs of slacking off as it achieves a new milestone recently with its total number of unique addresses finally hitting the 3 million mark on the 13th of July. So yeah, man, I mean, <coughs> excuse me. You know, it's talking about some different companies. It's talking about the surge in demand. Um, and any of that, here we go. The hope of a possible DeFi summer is high. Uh, this guy was quick to point out DeFi's exponential growth, noting that it took just 78 days for the unique addresses to jump from 2 to 3 million mark. Additionally, a poll created by the analyst showed that 53% of the respondents think the 4 million mark will be reached in the next 1 to 2 months. That's huge, guys. There's a lot of people coming into DeFi. I, I've said before, DeFi, I think, will be bigger than just, just plain out crypto. It's going to be really big. Um, and with that, I'm going to get off here, guys. You can follow me at True Perception 3. It's much appreciated. I, all your support is awesome. Um, it, just the growth I'm experiencing. Obviously, it's nothing on the grand scale of things, but for being a new channel, it's been really fun to watch. Um, we're almost to 250 subscribers now. Not far, really. It's growing every day. That means, you know, by the end of the year, I should easily hit my 1,000 mark. Um, hopefully, I can speed that up some by giving you guys some awesome content, but we're going to keep cranking. Don't forget, we got the playlist. I'll be updating them once a week and organizing the videos better for you guys so you can find stuff. Uh, and don't forget about the About section where I have all the links. If you want to donate to the, uh, to the channel, you can. All these funds would be used directly for channel stuff. Um, my hundredth video is actually coming out in the next few videos. I think I meant this will be 96. So I might do a live or maybe even a giveaway or something. Let me know what you guys think about that. And uh, yeah, don't forget about the private Facebook group. We could use some new blood in here. Would love to see you. Um, either way, guys, stay bullish, stay safe. You know, just hold on right now. I know things are crazy, but we're coming up out of here in the near future. I, I'm almost certain of it. And uh, it's not financial advice. It's what my gut's telling me.